Yeah, yeah, it's great. Is okay. that okay? Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Okay, excellent, excellent. Therefore, I guess we can start. I'll just put the timer. Sure. Okay, let's go. Hello, Dr. Luka Popov. Welcome to the stream and welcome to our next interview. How are you? Thank you, thank you. I'm great. I'm uh, on my vacation. Uh, maybe uh, my viewers will see that I'm not in my in my home, in my usual place of recording. So I, I'm still uh -huh. on, on my summer in my summer residence. So let's say like this. Actually, I, my, my parents. Yeah. Excellent. Great to hear that. And together, guys, we'll be talking about uh, improvement. Improvement is all just improvement because a uh, uh, universal topic. And in the meantime, we'll be trying to ask our friend uh, Dr. Luka Popov about the methods he tested so, already, what is his approach about the training, and maybe there is some kind of new discovery of his. And in the meantime, we'll be talking about Lashlo Polgar chess books of the Polgar Assistance Prodigy. Therefore, I encourage you, my friends, to make a short introduction into our audience, even if you know you a, a little bit before of the previous meeting. But therefore, if you could make a in short introduction and let us know what do you have in your sleeves about the chess prodigy. Progress. Okay, so I'm um, a dual chess improver, and um, this is also the name of my YouTube channel. So this is the the name I, I go by in in this uh, you know online chess community. Um, so yeah, I'm 40 years old. I started uh, to to improve to seriously play chess some. Um, it's almost it's like three years ago, and uh, my my dedication was that I I want to improve in chess. I want to you know see how far can I go. Uh, with the emphasis of uh, on on online, uh, on not online, but uh, rather over the board chess. So my main interest is to play over the board tournaments, over the board chess, uh, preferably in uh, classical time controls. Uh, uh, so I, I'm not so much interested in, in blitz and uh, online games. Uh, although I do use uh, and uh, online blitz and over the board blitz as a as a good training tool. So. Um, well, this, this this is basically it. What uh, as far as chess is concerned, so I also uh, I I decided to create this YouTube channel so I can share my experience and connect with other uh, other uh, adult improvers out there. Mm -hmm. so I think this would be uh, yeah. This is just a short introduction. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll be sharing uh, with you guys the link to the first meeting because we have met on the 24th of uh, January this year. Therefore, if yeah. anybody want, want to look uh, about uh, watch this video, I'll just put, put the links from time to time at, at, to this video and to the channel of our friend Dr. Luka Popov. And let us know what do you would like to start with about the improvement because at the last five or six months, you tested a lot of various, uh, let's say, uh, various methods. And in the meantime, you play at some of the over the board tournaments what are the conclusions what are the insights we are just listening to you all of the time yeah so uh, as far as the method goes i i didn't discover anything you know revolutionary new uh, basically I, i'm i'm still uh, holding my my views that uh, well first of all for for adult improvers i think the openings are not something you should be concerned uh, concerned with so i play um, i play natural openings so i i just try to enforce uh, enforce general principles uh, to play uh, classical chess, good solid chess. Uh, so uh, give give the emphasis to the piece development. Uh, I try to play the, with pieces rather with the pawns, and uh, I always open with uh, e4. And uh, as a black, I, I respond in, in most classical ways. And uh, this worked this worked very good for me. So the, the, this is the I I I want I want first to talk about the, the opening because this is a okay. topic which which everybody is so interested in. Uh, so it, it worked uh, pretty pretty well for me. So I can say that uh, my openings are are uh, pretty good. So when I analyze my my uh, serious over the board games, I always see that uh, after the opening, I usually come up with small small adv uh, advantage or or at least equal. And um, since I was playing the overboard tournaments, I I oftentimes uh, got got comments by stronger players, by masters, candidate masters, that oh wow, you you play very good openings. And uh, many people just assume that you know I, I just uh, I lock myself in the room and uh, you know learn openings, but uh, it's it, it's not at all. I, I I really just play natural moves and I do always post mortem analysis. So um, this is why one of the reasons why analyzing your own games is uh, the key key to improvement. So I play opening naturally and then after when I analyze the game I see uh, some some ways of of improvement or of playing better. And also the second thing, which is uh, connected to whole improvement, but uh, especially with the openings, is uh, to to go through to study master games. 
So there are many ways you could study master games. You could use a book and the board, or you could just watch uh, YouTube. You can watch masters play live, like uh, famous John Bartholomew or Naraditsky, and I, I, I don't know. So just watch masters play live and watch, uh, you know, uh, uh, some chess lectures, good with the games and so on. So by watching master games, I uh, this is also uh, the way I picked up some some ideas, uh, which then I, I use in my openings. So um, I, I this is just a small small uh, you know introduction because you asked me about mm -hmm. the methods. So I, I just want to you know uh, repeat for maybe some viewers uh, uh, are watching me for the first time. So just uh, this this is my chess philosophy. So yeah. forget about the openings, and uh, still I I think the most important thing is tactics uh, and. Uh, just you know by uh, drilling the the calculation ability this calculation muscle so that you can you can see a few moves ahead that you can calculate accurately not 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 long calculations i think uh, you know just see two and a half moves deep is uh, if you can see everything two and a half moves deep you'll be a very very strong player mm -hmm. so I, I believe tactics i believe uh, in calculation and like i said i believe in going through master games uh, just just to to get a, a feel of the flow of the game and, and and how the game develops from the opening to the to the end game yeah and, um, uh, th th this is how I, I i came up with uh you mentioned polgar books uh do they want to talk about this now or you you have some other uh questions yeah the... yeah I, I would like i would like to start a little bit because we can just switch the topics it's not a problem because especially i am interested about uh, one of your because i'm your fun if i can say that publicly that therefore i am just trying to watch your <clears throat> progress watch especially your book reviews your method reviews i'm super happy that you share it uh, with everybody and especially i was a little bit i, I wouldn't say concerned but i'm like super curious about the stuff that you uh, announced that you will be starting with polgar books be because there are too many books and you want to focus over just these books i mean the last polgar books three volumes the yeah. first one is the universal one about the tactics simple checkmates the other one is typical middle games and the third one is the end games and you just said that you is you are a little bit let's say tired of let's say uh, reading all of the books or something like trying to read all of these books because you know probably there are yeah. a lot of them and you want to be focused over this type of why poker books why this specific books and what drives you into this decision of course if this decision you haven't changed so far yeah, so I I, ha I haven't changed my, my decision and my opinion about Polgar books, but um, wh when I announced that I'll be working on Polgar books, I was a little bit maybe too ambitious. So I realized that uh, they take uh, a lot of effort. So I'm not, uh, you know, my, my original plan was I'll do this every day, you know, for half an hour or, or something. But uh, you know, l life is just uh, is yeah. just uh, so not not too so intense. polite. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just too intense. So, um, like you know, I I have a family. I have uh, three three kids. Uh, I have a very demanding job, uh, day job. I work as a software engineer. So all all of this, uh, I'm I'm slower than I originally tend to be. But uh, mm -hmm. still, the principle is the same. So why why Polgar books? Well, uh, first of all, because um, like I said, tactics and board vision I think are the most important uh, thing. Uh, for adult uh, uh, chess improver, uh, because if, if you compare an uh, adult player with a kid uh, who is a prodigy, who is very, who is, who is good in chess, um, the the difference and the main reason why adults are uh, so struggling to improve is because they they lack this natural, you know, uh, they just don't see the board and they just just don't don't see uh, mm -hmm. stuff, stuff on the board, they, you know, and then of course very simple blunders are are made and and so forth. Uh, so. Um, this is why I, I wanted to stick to Polgar books. And uh, what I like about uh, Polgar books is that uh, you uh, it, they, they allow you to be exposed to many, many different positions and just to, to be, you know, uh, actively looking at the positions because Polgar books, they, they have no words. They, they just have the positions and they have hundreds and thousands, thousands of positions. So maybe this is in, in the line of, uh, you know, Hendrik's uh, famous work, uh, Move First, Think Later, so, mm -hmm. uh, controversial book yeah yeah it's a little bit controversial but uh if, if you look his main thesis and uh mm -hmm. it's uh, it's widely accepted i would say he has some controversial um uh, you know claims but uh he says you know you, you just have to be exposed uh to as many positions as possible and mm -hmm. uh, you know the more positions you you have in in your head that you will you will play better chess so this is this is in um in this in this line so um 
another another reason why uh, and how I, I work through Portugal books, I always use physical board. And uh, I realized I, 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 I was to, uh, I, I spoke with many people, you know, online and uh, physical when uh, mm -hmm. board tournaments. And uh, I realized that um, one, one main difference be, uh, between adult improver and uh, somebody who just played uh, chess as a kid is that uh, adult improver, they like this abstract vision of the board. Mm -hmm. so it's very difficult for adult improver to learn, for example, to play blindfold. And it's mm -hmm. very difficult, yeah. you know, just the, the simple stuff, what color of the square. So I, mm -hmm. I, I, hear, uh, I heard many times, you know, you should learn the board. And then, you know, when I say B5, you say which color. Mm -hmm. I try I tried to learn this, you know, actively. I, I tried uh, with Alicia's uh, uh, training, chess common training. Uh, I, I found several methods, you know, try to memorize the board. And uh, I, I, I can manage, but as soon as I stop practicing, I forget. So if mm -hmm. you ask me how which color which color is B five square I I don't know I have mm -hmm. to close my eyes think visualize so th this is the problem and um, okay uh, this is I I'm I'm not sure that uh, adult improver can solve this problem I I I'm not sure I I I just cannot learn the coordinates I, I cannot learn the board and yeah many many other adult improvers uh, cannot so um, what is the consequence the consequence is that when we play uh, chess over the board. We have to, you know, we have to play with what what we see with our eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why, for I think, for adult improvers, there is a difference between uh, digital board, two D board, you know, when you play online chess, and the physical three D board. Mm -hmm. there, there is a difference, and uh, if if you are not, if if you know, if you have the abstract vision of the board, then it's uh, it's all the same because you are actually. I I, I spoke with several uh, strong players. I asked them how do you calculate. And mm -hmm. they actually, they they don't use so much their eyes as their brain. So mm -hmm. it's all the same. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, two-dimensional or three-dimensional board is just a reminder of the position. You know, they, they just take a look to remind the, the, their self about the position. But all the calculation is actually in their head. So mm -hmm. it's all the same, 2D or 3D. But for me, I, I realized it's not the same. So if I want to train myself for the over-the-board tournaments, I need to, to practice tactics and visualization on a 3D board. And, um, you know, many, many people told me, uh, you know, it, it's too much time. So, yeah, it's, you have to take the board, you have to take the book, you have to, you know, set, set up, up the pieces, up right? The position, the pieces, mm -hmm. it takes time. But my personal conclusion is that uh, I, I think it's more useful for me to solve one puzzle on the board than five puzzles on online, on, on, online, on screen with my mouse and, and so on. And, mm -hmm. and this is also why why I embraced you know Polgar books because I take a book I take a board and then then I set up the the pieces and I I work I I, I work with that and uh, I, I I think it's it's more use uh, useful than than doing the online. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And in the meantime, I'll just make a uh, short comment about the training with the real pieces. It is based on the additional factors. It's very important. It's so-called uh, muscle memory. Therefore, if you're just, uh, let's say, having the physical movement of the pieces, the, let's say, something like uh, receptors are going from the fingers into the brain, right? Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's easier to code it and to make it, uh, let's say, integrate with the system. And I'm especially interested about the other methods if you try right if you rethink or maybe if you just review with the video because i i want to let's say encourage more people to watch your video because uh, we probably know that your your channel is not that much let's say pro promotion promoted right therefore it would be better to let's say make it right now i am especially interested about the methods of de la Maza and the methods of woodpecker because probably you know this right both of them if yeah. we just make a little bit introduction into this one what do you advise what is the drilling method and the cycles and if you just give a, a, a at the insight about it, it would be fantastic. Yeah, sure. So, so the main the main method of um, the Ramaza and the Bulbaker, and I, I think it was uh, one, one one book one book in between. Uh, it, it's also called Rapid Chess Improvement or something. Uh, so, Rapid Chess Improvement is uh, the Ramaza book. The Ramaza, yeah, it yeah, is yeah, his book. Yeah, yeah, and then then there is a Woodpecker and there is one uh, seven steps, so, something like this. Uh, and anyway, there there are, there are okay. several several um, books which which approach this method and. Uh, well, the, the the whole the whole point of uh, of this is to um, uh, is is to uh, is to take a set of puzzles and just do them over and over again. And there mm -hmm. are now several ways how can you do it. You can you can use uh, uh, so the original Dalamaza method was uh, you know these seven steps. So 
try this seven times over and every time take uh, half as time as you needed uh, the last time. So if, if you, you uh, he says that you should take a set of thousand puzzles and then you do them, for example, one month, then you take the same thousand puzzles and do it in this uh, in 15 days. Mm -hmm. the same, so just you half, 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 so that you, you uh, yeah. And, and uh, the idea is that this should, um, um, you know, force your brain to absorb patterns. And mm -hmm. uh, this is, it, it looks, it, it looks, it is correct because uh, it's, it's been tested and it's been proven correct. So it just looks that our brain works, works like this. So it, there is, um, it, it's more useful to, to take uh, 100 puzzles and do them seven times over than to do 700 uh, puzzles, which are all different. So this, this mm -hmm. is and uh, also, you know, Chessable uh, adopted this method, but they kind of improved it. So they have this spaced repetition and, and so on. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, this, this, is a, this is a good method. And um, I came up, uh, since we last, last spoke, I came up with uh, my own, own version of, of this, mm -hmm. which is, it, actually, I didn't came up with it. I, 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 I yeah, you just modified it, it, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, this method I will now describe, I, I found it on, on the net and I little modified. So mm -hmm. I use uh, flashcards, so um, in our, but digital flash, flashcards. So one of the way to do uh, this woodpecker method is to, uh, classical way is to take index card and cut cut the position and uh, just uh, on the back of the card, uh, write the solution. And then um, th this is how you can, you can, you can go through, through the puzzles. And uh, I found this very use, useful program. It's called, uh, I don't know if you heard it, Anki. Yes, Anki. And by the way, I'll just make a short, yeah. uh, let's say, short comment. This is the stuff that uh, Neil Bruce from Twitter, from Chess Punks, yeah. he do he do that very, very often. Therefore, probably if Neil Bruce will, will uh, agree, we'll just get him into the interview after a few months. And therefore, he'll be addressing this stuff. Therefore, let's say having these flashcards, one of the proponents of this method is Neil Bruce from Twitter. But anyway, it's a great point. Please continue. Yeah, and, and Neil Bruce, he, uh, he uses physical cards and because he's commuting to, to his job mm -hmm. and he's doing this in the train but the method is the same so he has the set of puzzles and he, he's doing them over and over again so uh, the, this, this 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 is the same same method as a woodpecker or, or everything so i i, I use um this anki uh, software mm -hmm. this is uh, also flashcards but uh, they are first of all they are, they are digi digi digital so you, you just uh, you, you you open um, you can uh, paste the the picture so mm -hmm. i paste the picture of the position and then when you when you click space, the solution comes uh, about. And yeah. uh, this Anki feature, it also it's very similar to Chessable with this option of space repetition. So mm -hmm. they uh, once you solve the puzzle, you can rate it: was it easy, too easy, good, difficult, hard, and so on. There are I think five. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, depending on how you rate the puzzle, uh, yeah. that it, it it will be repeated that that option. Yeah, the, the program space. adjusted to your needs and to your weaknesses, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if, if something is difficult, it will come more often. If something is easy, it will come uh, you know, less frequent and, and so on. So yeah. uh, this is why I, I use Anki. And um, currently, I, I do two things uh, from Anki. So first, I do this Lev Albert uh, 300 positions. Mm -hmm. So I have these 300 positions from the book. I just you know took picture of every position and insert it in the software. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I do them all over and uh, again. And one um, very, very nice book, uh, which I discovered, I mean, it's, it's well known, it's Dan Heisman's uh, Back to Basics. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Back to Heisman, Basic Tactics, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. yeah. So uh, Dan Heisman has this theory that, uh, you know, if you're an adult improver, you should do basic tactics uh, over and over again. And he has some 600 puzzles, I think, in these books, which are very good. I mean, they, they, some of them are simple. But they are very, uh, very common patterns. So it's very mm -hmm. to, to know these simple patterns. And some of them are not so simple. But uh, no, 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 I mean, no, no puzzle is difficult that you have to calculate like ten moves deep or something. Yeah, so they are very good. So I, I, I have this book, and also I, I took a picture of every position, and I, and I, I insert it into Anki, right? Insert it into Anki. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I do uh, this Heisman book. Um, or on Anki all the time, and this is the way. Uh, this is one one of the ways I, I train when I'm on my computer. So I I don't always have you know time or possibility or space to to set up my board and take the Polgar book. So mm -hmm. when I am you know the, when when I have to use the computer because you know I, I just have a little time or I am sitting in my chair and I don't have the board, then I use uh, Anki cards. And mm -hmm. the, the difference why why I like Anki so much is because. When you when you solve the puzzles on a chessable or 
uh, Lich Sorg or, or, or some other online, you always have, you know, you, you have this mouse in your hand mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and, and, and you tend to play and you tend to, to solve the, the quickly. And mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult for me to restrain myself, you know, I see, to, to calculate all, all the way uh, to the solution. So I see mm -hmm. oh, this move could be good and I j just play it. So mm -hmm. instead of, you know, stop and calculate the, the position like I, I would on, on the over the board in, in the real game, I yeah. tend to play against the computer. And um, yeah, so uh, this is why I like Anki because it's just, you know, a photo of position and uh, mm -hmm. there is no mouse, there is no, you know, this dopamine when you when, when you when you solve the puzzle, you, you just need to sit, you need to, to look, you need to find the whole solution. And then only after you, you, you see the whole solution, I click space and I see the mm -hmm. solution, which is all, which is in coordinates. So this yeah. is also the way uh, how I practice uh, coordinates, which, uh, mm -hmm. which I, I, I and remember the and remember the parts of the board better because with this yeah. you need to visualize the board and in the meantime some like solidify the general uh, over the board uh, let's say picture. And what about uh, the woodpecker method? Because this one is pretty much common, pretty much known uh, in comparison to the Dalamaza. And uh, I would like to know what do you think about this woodpecker method? Because I need to uh, stress out that woodpecker method is based on Delamaza, something like a little right. bit of, let's say, difference. But in the meantime, this is the book with selected positions. And some coaches or some trainers says that uh, just the method itself, it's not some like revolutionary because we just mm -hmm. said that, but rather the selection of the positions that may be very important because the positions appear pretty much frequent and therefore you will be integrating these uh, patterns into your mind and recognizing the middle game, because it's especially to the middle game, a way better and making decision process more uh, let's say prone error prone what about that yeah so i i i have this uh, woodpecker method on chessable and uh, i have to say that uh, he has like three chapters so first of like basic intermediate advanced i guess mm -hmm. so, yeah so these basics are are okay they have like 320 these uh, basics but as soon as I, I go to the immediate uh, it's it's too difficult so it's um, for me for my level it's not so uh, based on you know it's not so pattern recognition as just pure calculation mm -hmm. so, um, and, and i realized that um you know uh, this woodpecker method uh the the, the uh, this author I, I think one of the authors uh, he says that he was an international master and then he used this to prepare himself. axel axel smith axel, axel smith, smith from sweden mm -hmm. yeah so smith says that he, he was an international master and he became grand master after this so i i think this is the uh this is the level of you know freedom master and above these uh these intermediate but mm -hmm. uh, the first the first 300 and so are are very good in my opinion but uh, yeah like i said later it just it's just too um too too difficult and it's it's more the calculation and i imagine if you are i am you know then this advance is also you know something you see very quickly and it becomes more like patterns yeah so I, I, I prefer uh like this you know this the heisman for example, this his book, and uh, I mean, you, you can use any set of any set of puzzles and and do do woodpecker method. So I I, I chose this Der Heisman. It's uh, more appropriate for my level. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And now I would like to ask you about another interesting book because it was uh, uh, as far as far as I know, it was published twenty years ago, and recently it was reprinted. And probably you may know this book, and I would be especially interested. What do you think about this book? The book's name is Seven Deadly Chess Sins by Grandmaster Jonathan Rosso. And in the meantime, if you know about this sins by the adult chess players, you can just share it as well, because uh, most often you are testing your own, and therefore it would be even even better to know what what uh, since you are doing and how to get rid of them please yeah, continue so, so this is uh, i i have this book with me this this is the book you are talking about i i, I just yeah. or, ordered the physical copy uh, i i had a digital copy be, uh, uh, beforehand so uh, this book is very interesting uh, interesting it um, it talks about uh, chess psychology and uh, the mistakes we made when it's, when we sit over the board and uh, the, the way how we approach the game and how we approach our opponent and how we approach our thinking and how we you know uh, our approach to the result uh, uh, the attachment on the result and the rating and so forth so um this is a great book uh and uh, i was i was reading I, I had a digital copy of this book uh some two years ago and i started reading it uh, you know i, I came I, I read the first few chapters it was okay interesting but nothing nothing special i couldn't relate because i didn't have this over the board tournament experience 
and mm -hmm. uh, you know I, I started to play chess seriously and then I had one tournament and then this you know COVID stuff happened and I did I didn't have any chance to play over the board tournaments but yeah. in the last uh, year or so I, I played many tournaments because uh, it's 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 now permissible so um, after I played several tournaments especially this last tournament I, I'm now in split I I, I just uh, finished it 10 days ago I, I finished the tournament so mm -hmm. um, this this last tournament of mine uh, this uh, over the board uh, split split open it was uh, you know all about uh, psychology and I I couldn't you know I I was because I by training I, I'm a physicist I'm engineer so I'm like mm -hmm. oh psychology is you know for 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 weak weak fellows so you know I, I'm engineer I know mathematics I I I'm, I will just you know uh, approach this as a mathematical problem mm -hmm. but, uh, then I realized on this last tournament that you know every game um, I, I I did I, I of course I, I talked about this on my channel so every game had some you know strong psychological aspect which. Uh, um, impacted my uh, my decision making process and my my move selection process and everything. So either my opponent were, were too strong, I was intimidated, I was in fear. On the yeah. two, two week, you know, the, I see some, just some kid who, you know, I I think he's weak, so I, I'm I'm uh, I'm influenced by this, or, or or I'm afraid because you know the guy plays too quickly, so I think okay, he knows all the tricks, he he has all the theory, or yeah. there is something, you know, every every game was. Uh, was 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 some psychological battle, and then mm -hmm. I remember this book. You know, it, it started to sound familiar. And then, uh, since I'm on my, my uh, I'm on vacation, I ordered the the physical book so I can read it on on the beach. You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I started to read it again, and I was like, uh, you know, suddenly recognizing all these stuff. Mm -hmm. about. So I'm suddenly um, relating um, related uh, to to these scenes which he talks. But okay, I I I don't know how how they're all. Called, but they are they are basically they are connected to to this you know um, everything which is not strictly chess mm -hmm. influences your chess you know yeah yeah that's and, correct and yeah. that's why this book was that much influential twenty years ago mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it's um it, it's a great book and I, I'm now I, I'm now reading it again after two years I'm now halfway through and mm -hmm. um, well it, 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 it's just for for somebody who um, who wants to play on the over the board tournaments, and especially if you can't have experience, you know, playing over the board, you should uh, you, sh you should you should give this this book a go. And I am now uh, I'm preparing for the next tournament. It's uh, 15 days for now, I think, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, two weeks from now. And uh, you know, my, my preparation for the next tournament is uh, almost uh, exclusive psychological. So I'm just trying you know, to to to, to, um, to train my 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 mind, my attitude. So. To tell myself, you know, when you sit at the board, you know, don't be concerned with rating, don't be concerned with uh, with the rank. Try to play the best moves. Uh, you know, give, give yourself time. Don't play too fast. Don't play too slow. Uh, you know, uh, trust your intuition. Don't overthink. Overthinking is, for example, one. one yeah. Of, I think yeah. One of the things. First. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th don't overthink. You know, if, if you see a simple move which you know develops the piece with the tempo, just just play the move. Don't don't you know. So um, these are this is my my preparation for the for the next tournament. So it's very interesting because uh, until until now all my preparation and all my um, improvement efforts were uh, were you know focused on uh, don't blunder, don't miss tactics. Uh, you know um, some pieces of advice overall uh, repeated, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, th this is the first time I I try to, to uh, started to think about psychological uh, aspects of the of the game. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, I, I would like to make a little bit uh, of promo about the, this is something like a second part, the continuation yeah. of Jonathan Rosso, Chess for Zebras. Mm -hmm. And if you finish reading this one that you've shown, Seven Deadly Chess Sense, this one is a continuation, and it's a very good one on the little bit higher level, a little bit more sophisticated, but something like wh whoever is fascinated by psychology, by a lit little bit of science and a little bit of philosophy, some like philosophy yeah, based on yeah. chess, it is something like a great reading. I was fascinated by this book. I was reading this some like 12 to 15 years ago when I was pretty much hooked on chess. And now let's get into another topic because probably you may have more experience uh, based on the, let's say, testing the methods. Which methods? so far you have tested are working for you so like you do not want to change them and which methods you tested are pretty much bad and if you know what would be the reason that they may not be that much efficient especially for you if you'd like to share your experience based on all of the methods or let's say ways how to get better that you tested so far yeah so um definitely i think uh, the good uh, 
to good good methods, good practice, which I I intend to keep is uh, to study master games. So I think it's very important, you know, to to be exposed to um, to to chess. Especially, I I recommend old masters uh, like you know um, Aliehin or Alekain, uh, Capablanca, Reti, uh, Morphy, uh, Lasker, especially. So uh, the, the, these kind of players, I think, uh, uh, studying these games is very very beneficial and. Um, Many people ask why, you know, why why it's better to study Lasker than to study, you know, Magnus what, 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 what Magnus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or somebody. Well, the problem is that Magnus is playing the the very very obvious, the very strong opponents, who, uh, you know, they stop a, a, any plan. He, he mm -hmm. tries to realize they they stop it five moves uh, b b before an, any kind of realization. So it's very difficult to to see uh, winning plans and, and uh, why why did he play the moves? What what are the plans? Because all these plans get stopped by his opponent. Yeah, and it's very, very, very difficult to understand. But when you when you see, you know, for example, a game of Capablanca, especially if Capablanca is annotator, because you know people back then they they didn't you know, write so many variations. Their annotations were very simpler. You know, Capablanca mm -hmm. annotation is you know he played this, you know, I don't know, knight uh, knight c three because uh, I get uh, stronger control over the center. So mm -hmm. very very simple annotations. And yeah. then, then you can you can understand you know when you see for example uh, Alekai doing minority attack or something that actually uh, the fact that that his opponents are not so strong they allow him to to perform minority attack to the mm -hmm. end. we'll never see you know Nepo allowing Magnus to 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 take minority attack to the to the to the end so yeah. th th this is why I think it's important to uh, to study classics so definitely uh, this I would I would keep and uh, definitely. Uh, you know, tactical training, any kind of tactical training on the board. So be it just Polgar books, mate in two, mate in three, or or any other uh, any other um, simple tactical training made made on the board. I think it's very good. And also, I um, one one other thing uh, which helped me a lot is that um, after the tournament, I had a tournament in January. It was um, mm -hmm. uh, in in Rabat. It was a very uh, frustrating tournament because I. Uh, Many many kids came uh, with uh, which which were under uh, which are over uh, underrated underrated. Mm -hmm. so yeah. The problem is because of the COVID, the kids didn't play chess in the tournaments, and they stuck with rating you know eleven hundred, but they are actually eighteen hundred, and then they all came you know after um, after the overboard some tournaments were opened again, they, they came and they just you know uh, beat beat everybody. So it was frustrating to to lose uh, against so many kids, but um, when when I was playing this tournament, I was. Uh, Thinking actually during the game, I was thinking about algorithm, about uh, blood, mm -hmm. uh, about this to do list, and then I, I intensively uh, during all this tournament, I was thinking about, you know, how how to make uh, some simple uh, thought process which will allow me to to blunder to blunder less and to miss tactical opportunities less. And you know that mm -hmm. there, there are many many books written about this, many YouTube videos, uh, many good chess authors have written about this, but. Uh, not none of these was completely satisfactory to me. There, yeah. uh, so, some were either you know too simple or too ambiguous or too complicated. You know, like ask yourself these eighteen questions every time mm -hmm. on a main screen. So, so I I um, designed my my own uh, my own chess algorithm and I made a video. It's called like uh, I think ultimate chess thinking mm -hmm. for adult yeah. and uh, I, I have only three. You know, after you move upon a uh, place, place the move. Ask three, these three questions. Then think. Then before you make a move, ask your your three questions. And um, the, the questions are very simple, and you, you can, can do them um, very very quickly. So uh, I, I I can just go through uh, quickly through. through yeah, the, of course, of course. Algorithm. So so the first question when your opponent plays um, plays a move, you should ask yourself, uh, does this piece uh, what what does this piece attack? So your opponent makes makes the move with the knight, and you just ask yourself what. Uh, what does the piece attack? So does your knight attack the queen, for example? So it's just a very simple question. The more advanced version of this question is to ask yourself, what squares does the piece attack? So not just does the piece attack some of my pieces, but what squares does the piece, you know, control? Of, of control, control, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's, it's a little bit advanced, but just for a few blunder check, it's enough to see if the, if the piece attacks something. And then um, the second question is, um, uh, how does the piece influence other other pieces? Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. this move. 
how does the movie influence other pieces? Because, for example, you you move the knight, and suddenly uh, the bishop, which was blocked by the knight, is no longer uh, no longer blocked, and this bishop suddenly maybe may activated uh, uh, activate side. Yeah, or 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 you can just you know um, yeah let, let, let let's just keep it there. And, and so uh, just by asking yourself how how are other pieces influenced? Uh, so if you move the knight, uh, are some other pieces now attacking something? You know. So just quick. How does other pieces influence? And the third question, which helps you to find the tactics, is mm -hmm. uh, what, what uh, which weakness does the move lo uh, leave behind? So if you if you move the piece, you know the piece is no longer there, obviously, and uh, that piece had had a job. The, the, that piece protected some important square or piece or pawn or something. And then if you move the piece, uh, suddenly the piece the piece doesn't do the same job anymore. So, uh, you know, uh, something which used to be protected is no longer protected. Mm -hmm. So this is how, uh, and, and uh, this can give you a hint, you know, um, where to look for tactics. The yeah. most obvious is the, I mean, this goes for all moves, but the most obvious is the pawn move. So pawn move always create, you know, two weaknesses. And uh, then after the move is made, you can, can just ask yourself, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, just, uh, just, just, just a question. Okay, okay. And guys, this is the stuff related to the general ultimate thinking. Therefore, this is something like some of the parts that our offer is uh, talking about. And uh, after the stream is over, I'll just share the link about the ultimate, uh, let's say, thinking process. And you can just look at this sl slowly because uh, all of these parts are divided into some like a smaller parts. Therefore, if you want to know about this algorithm, I'll just put the link onto the video. And in the meantime, We'll be talking about other uh, stuff as well, because, for example, there are some stuff uh, related to, let's say, opening, related to middle game and relating to the end game. At the opening, as our guest uh, says, it is something like the stuff that you shouldn't focus too much. But, for example, middle game is all what is all about because of the tactics, because of the patterns and because of the thinking process. Please continue. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. I okay. Had, had to close the doors. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, so. Um, yeah. I, I was saying that this is so-called the weakness of the last move. So when when the pawn moves, you know, the, the two squares are always weakened. Then uh, immediately you, you you can you can start. This gives you a hint where you should be looking for tactics. So the, just these three quick, uh, simple questions, and it can be done really done very quickly. You know, what does the piece attack? How does it influence other pieces? What weakness does it leave behind? And mm -hmm. uh, so these are three three questions. And uh, so for the and then you think you, of course you you see if there is any tactics on the board. If no, improve your your piece or, or or whatever. Try to improve your position. I mean this is the whole chess, what, what whole chess is about. And then before you made the move, similar three questions you should ask yourself. So the first question is can can your piece can the piece you are about to move be uh, captured or or attacked or harassed mm -hmm. somehow? Mm -hmm. And this especially goes for example. Uh, the second part can the piece be attacked goes uh, with queen. So especially if you want to move the queen, you, you don't. You usually don't want to move move the queen on the square in which he, uh, she can be attacked by the next move. So just mm -hmm. ask yourself this simple question, and then um, also you know ask yourself how does it influence other pieces. So it, it's very often, for example, you you, you play a knight knight to uh, d7 and you block the queen, which used to protect something. Uh, you know. So just ask yourself, how does it influence other pieces? And um, usually you, you are thinking here, the, uh, you know, defensively. So the, does does your your uh, piece block some other piece, which is doing something important? And the third thing is the same, you know, the last move weakness. So what which move, which uh, which uh, weakness do you create by by playing the move? So uh, you, you you tend to move the knight. This knight used to do this, this, and this, and now it will no longer do this job. So you you just need to check if uh, all the squares which a knight is now leaving behind are, are covered. And um, this, is, this is actually a very, very simple algorithm. You can, you can do this very quickly. And uh, th th this really works. So this helped me to, uh, to find tactical opportunities uh, to avoid many blunders. So especially this, you know, last, this weakness, this stuff. Mm -hmm. OK, I want to move my knight here. But what, what does this knight do? Oh, it protects the square. Oh, but if I do this, yeah. So this, this, this is what, what helped, me, uh, helped me a lot. But I, I have to say, at the same time, it's uh, very, very difficult, if not impossible, to to keep this in mind during the, you know, in the mm -hmm. Yeah, so very, very really, important. Uh, yeah, so when, when you're really on the, you know, you're, you're playing over the board, there are all these emotions, you know, 
Uh, mm -hmm. all, all this thinking about uh, various the distractions uh, general right distractions, the time pressure everything and uh, it's very difficult to you know uh, just um, uh, discipline yourself to to think about uh, uh, about this algorithm and, and everything so it's it's not easy but uh, i found this very very helpful especially when i feel you know like um, oh I, I i he plays some move which i didn't predict so uh, the position suddenly turned in, in some you know the game uh, the, the trend of the game suddenly turned in some direction I, I didn't foresee, and then you know, you know, I, I tend to get panicked, and then I remember the algorithm, and then I just call me, you know, ask myself these, you know, simple three or four questions, and then, then, then suddenly I, I feel like I have some sort of control over the position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much for this extensive uh, elaboration about that. And uh, you just touched upon a little bit the stuff that I am super happy that we can address as well. It is the uh, things that they are called the uh, slow versus fast thinking. And this is the concept by Daniel Kahneman. And if you know this concept, if you uh, would, type, would uh, tell, tell us a little bit about the fast thinking and slow thinking and how, uh, let's say, what kind of processes can be attached to the fast thinking and what card should be attached to the slow thinking, how it relates to the chessboard and chess thinking. Yeah, so so um, this idea from, from this famous book is that there are, there are two systems of, of thinking. So the mm -hmm. system one is when you are on the familiar territory and uh, you actually don't don't want to think. You, you, you just want to apply what you already know and, yeah. and, and to do, you know, your um, to come up with your solution. And there, there are some very interesting in, in this book there, there are some very very interesting examples in which you know, um, just given some some very simple uh, simple questions which you mm -hmm. answer wrong, uh, so some very simple mathematical questions, uh, which you which you immediately answer wrong because your brain doesn't want to think about the problem, but uh, you know it's just um, it, it wrongly just takes something from the experience and tries to apply to apply it, and uh, it's uh, I, I mean the nature of our brain is that our brain doesn't like doesn't like to think you know. It, it, it it's lazy. Like, uh, it, it's lazy. It's just lazy. Yeah. So it's like uh, this this famous quote from Jan Gustafsson, who said uh, that uh, you know chess is a constant struggle before between my desire not to lose and my desire not to think. <laughs> Great. Yeah. You, you, you just need yeah. to, need to force your brain to think. And now now you have these two two systems. So system one is just uh, don't think, just apply what you, what you learned before and just apply it to the new situation. And mm -hmm. system two is no, no, no. Let, let's 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 analyze. Let's get into the into the into the stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's let's try to approach this as something something new. And th and this is this is constant struggle. And uh, you know, in, in chess, it's um, something I I talked about several times when you, when you do chess training, the difference between. Uh, Pattern pattern recognition training mm -hmm. and adaptation training. So pattern yeah, recognition yeah. is something your brain just recognizes and applies, and the calculation is when you are you know presented with something uh, which your brain cannot connect to the pattern, and then uh, of course you 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 need to think and you you need to uh, analytically uh, solve the problem, and uh, you 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 just have to fight your brain, you know, and uh, um, the the problem arises when uh, there is some unique you know some position which is very very similar. To some pattern your brain knows, but there is a this slight difference, and then your mm -hmm. brain doesn't want to, you know, calculate. The brain just wants to, wants to apply what what it knows, and then if you're not careful enough over the board, and uh, you know your brain sees something for something familiar, and uh, you know you just unconsciously uh, say to yourself, "Oh, I know this. I saw this hundred times, and play just play the move without analytical thinking." Then, uh, then it, it, you know you, you can get in trouble. So you, you as um, the more you can force your brain, you know, to to to, to think analytically, uh, the better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is very important. And in the meantime, we just mentioned about the slow thinking, fast thinking, and it is based on the stuff that uh, the fast thinking is most often the patterns. And the patterns are the, let's say, parts of the positions or the specific positions with uh, not that many number of pieces that are automatic. Uh, we have the automatic access, so like without any delay. And you just mentioned about the Polgar books. And in the meantime, uh, I will just address that these three Polgar books that we mentioned about the uh, general one, about programmates one and two uh, and next one about the middle games typical middle games positions and the end game three of them because i uh, let's say make a little bit of calculation are about 14 14 thousand of uh, positions and do you think if, if it would be possible or if it would be maybe uh, very important 
to try to get all of these, let's say, positions into the, let's say, long, short term memory, sorry, long term memory, but with super fast access. And based on that, how much our strength would get, uh, let's say, would get increased. Do you think about it? Or maybe because you just mentioned that you were a little bit ambitious, you want to extend it, right? Yeah. Not, not probably for three years, maybe for eight, maybe 10 years. But anyway, if we had the opportunity to, let's say, some like uh, uh, make it into the cloud, right? Let's call it the cloud, yeah. all yeah. of these three books, how much w w will the level of, let's say, average player of 1500, how much it would improve if we'd have, let's say, 14,000 of patterns in their mind? Yeah, I mean, if, if this will be possible, I'm sure it will be, you know, master level for, for sure. But, mm -hmm. uh, but the the problem is yeah the, the, you know in order in order to um, to put these positions in the mind as adult you have to do them like you know you you, you would have to, to use woodpecker so you have to do them seven or ten times over so this is the mm -hmm. difference between you know um, kid and an adult adult player so the kid uh, if 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 the kid is uh, is focused if it, if he is he or she is concentrated and then you you present him with the position. He will immediately, you know, it, it will just go to his long-term memory, and this mm -hmm. is why, you know, um, people who start uh, as kids and they play regularly, they 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 go to master level. But uh, for us adults, we have to do this ten times over. So I don't think it's it's possible for an adult to to learn these all for you know uh, how, how much did you say fourteen hundred uh, no fourteen fourteen thousand fourteen thousand mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's 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 very difficult. So my um. Mm, my my use of all polgar books uh, i use them just to force myself to to calculate and to think and to sit over the board and you know to 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 sit like this and think and not not moving the pieces and try to find a solution and of course some patterns will uh, will remain and um, there is this um, i mean many many coaches say that at, i think lev albert is, is the most famous in which he says you know um, Good club player knows like a uh, thousand positions. Uh, mm -hmm. ma master uh, expert knows ten thousand positions. Grandmaster knows one hundred thousand uh, positions. Yeah, it's a, a little bit less, by the way. Uh, in a general, because it was the study, in some like ex approximation is that the grandmasters know about thirty to forty thousand positions. Mm -hmm. World champions should know about eighty thousand, sometimes even what one hundred thousand. Masters, uh, FIDE masters, especially some like twenty-five to thirty, and candidate masters or national masters are like fifty. 15,000 up to 20,000. Please continue. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so this is this is yeah. So the, the, this is basically uh, what I, what I wanted to say. But uh, you know, for, for adult improvers, so I'm, I'm a little bit less ambitious in, in this manner. So I'll be, for example, I'll be very happy. Um, you, you 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 can take uh, in order, you know, to uh, to memorize positions. This is why I mentioned I use Anki to work on uh, with Lev Albert. these 300 uh, 300 positions. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you could only memorize or understand or, you know, have in the long term memory these 300 positions from Lev Albert, you will you will be, you know, given that you work on everything else, uh, this this should make you a strong club player. Just 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 these 300 positions. So, mm -hmm. OK, and, thank you very much. Smaller numbers. Yeah. Yeah, and and we just let's say get from this because this is one of the ideas that uh, younger players they just uh, may become really strong after let's say six, eight, sometimes ten years. If they started at the age of six, at the age of sixteen, after playing for ten years, and especially being exposed for the intense training, mm -hmm. intense uh, let's say uh, the tournament practice and so on, they can become some like very very strong players. With adults, it doesn't work this this way. But what I am interested about uh, is uh, let's say the psychological approach to the game because you just mentioned that you yeah. just started working about psychology and if you just share your experience especially if this painful one it would be even more uh, let's say uh, important how uh, let's say you discover your psychological weaknesses and what make you the most uh, i would say upset or depressed unless you get rid of that or started to get get rid of that what make the biggest impact over your game I and mean, especially over the board because you are testing the games over the board games uh, type what make the biggest impact on you not just related that harm your game and maybe there was something that make your game even better not technical stuff yeah yeah so uh, the first thing for example in this last tournament uh, the problem was it, it was uh, it was not divided into classes so everybody was in the same tournament and then um, what, what I, I had problem dealing with is the change of rhythm. So um, I, it's very difficult to be paired with somebody who is your, your own strength. So the first round I played with um, 2,100 player, some, some strong candidate master. And then, you know, 
the next round also very strong player and then the third round was a kid who who you know just just learned the rules of chess and then the next round again you know candidate master and then again a kid so it, it was very difficult for me to adjust you know to have to play um in one round a game which lasts for four hours for example the first round i uh, the game was uh, lasted more than four hours and uh, i played really well i made the blunder or, or no 48 move so you know very intense struggle a very very serious chess in which you know every subtlety is, is important and then in the next round you, you get a kid who, 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 who blunders you know pieces and you you, you can may, maybe even deliver scholars mate or something so mm -hmm. it, it's um this this is one of the stuff you know which is not related to chess but it's 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 difficult you know to shift and uh i mean the, the solution is uh, like they said you have to play the board it doesn't matter who is you know you, you have to play good moves uh, whether yeah. it's, it's a kid or, or a grandmaster, you, you know, a good move is, is a good move always. So, so uh, th th this kind of stuff. So, um, also, you know, that um, I'm too much concerned with my with my opponent. I'm either underestimating or overestimating. So, mm -hmm. for example, I had this um, uh, opponent who is fourteen hundred, but I saw that before me he had a victory against. Uh, 2100 and one yeah yeah this is this is terrifying <laughs> yeah so i was like okay great he's 1400 but obviously he gained he just came you know to, to to increase his rating and now i have to play him and now this knowledge that i will probably lose if i win i will have to fight you know for four and a half hours it will be a miracle if i win and i will not get any any rating points because he's lower rated than me so yeah. um I, I was very discouraged, for example, on, on this uh, on this particular opponent. Mm -hmm. So there, there was also, you know, opponent who played very quickly, who is um, uh, obviously some, you know, club player who, who plays lots of blitz and, you know, has lots of tricks in his sleeves. So he, he, he just played very quickly. And then uh, instead of, you know, playing my, my old tempo, I was just uh, trying to, to match his, mm -hmm. his yeah. playing. Yeah. And, yeah. and then... Uh, since he's more uh, more experienced club player, he, he he beat me on some you know trick, so um, yeah, all, all all these all these kind uh, kind of stuff, and also you know I'm I'm very um, I have to work on my um, my mental attitude when I when I sit over the board, you know, to to tell myself that it's not so important because mm -hmm. it, I mean it, it really isn't. First of all, it's just a game. Second of all, um, okay, I do have some ambitions, but uh, like one commentator on my YouTube. Uh, uh, wrote uh, wrote just this the comment yeah mm -hmm. he wrote the comment he said that uh, you know what's the difference uh, i mean I, I i have my ceiling I, I will reach it in five years or ten years i mean what, yeah. what, what's the difference so um you know i'm i'm just too too invested emotionally too too stressed and um like the, the uh, rosson said you know you have to enjoy the game Mm -hmm. If you don't enjoy the game, then your results will not be good. So I have to train. Yeah, yeah, chess for zero. And, and, and mm -hmm. also, yeah, the, the second book. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So um, this is something uh, also I, I I would like to uh, to change. So when I sit on the board, um, you know, just ju just just try try to be relaxed and try to give give my best and not be you know, so so you know frustrated if I lose or something. And also mm -hmm. this this uh, stuff which is very often in many sports this uh, short memory you know so mm -hmm. when, when, you, when you make a blunder or, or um, this shift you know you I, I have a winning position or, or at least yeah. i think i have a winning position and then suddenly i i lose it because i missed something or i blundered something and uh, i mean the game is still playable I, I can still draw or or something but then you know i i just keep keep back and thinking oh, mm -hmm. how reminiscing play. about the event previous yeah. events right yeah mm -hmm. so basically crying over the the spilled milk so mm -hmm. yeah this 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 kind of stuff uh, was i am also i was also impacted by 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 this so yeah i i, I think uh in my last tournament uh, the chest was uh, the ch the chest was uh, the, the the smallest problem so mm -hmm. when, I, when i look at just my chest okay there was blunder here and there's actually some small blunders i, I don't even do uh, I, I didn't do i think in this tournament any you know obvious one more blunder Okay, then there, there were some, of course, mistakes because I, I, I would, I would not lose otherwise. So, but my, my openings are fine, middle games plans are fine, everything is fine. So, uh, I, I think the, uh, it's, it's time to start working on this psychological aspect. It, it became very important.
Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I'll just uh, would like to add maybe one or two pieces of advice because I was struggling the same way as you did, but uh, of course it was a little bit earlier. And one of the ideas I came uh, up, it was the idea, I, I'm not sure if I read it or uh, heard something, but it was very important to me. First of all, it is the, uh, the motto that is pretty much repeated, losing is learning. Therefore, no matter how bad you lose, unless you do your best or try to do your best, it's the learning process. And, yeah. the, and another one is uh, something like maybe my a little bit individual because I didn't see this. This is, let's say, published in many, many uh, various sources. It's something like that. Whenever I make a mistake, I, I, I try to accept that. Yes, I'm an idiot, but it's not a problem because after the game, I'm not an idiot anymore. So like a little bit humorous. And another one is if my opponent get the advantage, I am telling to myself, show me how we're going to win it. Yes, mm -hmm. you can beat me, but I'm way more interested to see how you are going to get, uh, realize the advantage if I do the most, uh, uh, the most, the biggest uh, resistance ever. And let me show. Of course, if I lose, it's okay. But the curiosity and the change in approach, something from crying over the spilled milk up to the curiosity, show me how are you going to win it? Because I have a lot of different resources. I know the end game, I know the tricks, and I want to see how you're going to realize the advantage. And what is very important, most of the time, I, I needed to repeat myself many times this one, the guy is not an engine. Of course, even if it looks like, oh my goodness, this guy is throwing at me, but I told myself, the guy is not an engine. He's not perfect. He must have made some of inaccuracies or mistakes. I need to be patient. I need to be resourceful. And after that, the miracle happens. Therefore, it's a pretty, pretty much good piece of advice as well. Yeah, and and let... it's also, you know, a great learning experience because yeah. you know, how to convert to the advantage is, is uh, the great part of the chess skill. So if he can show you how to convert the advantage, mm -hmm. it's like, He's You're learning you, as well. Yeah, he's giving you chess lessons for free. Mm -hmm. so he's, he's, he's teaching you how to yeah. the advantage. So. Teaching you life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Teaching you life, yeah. And now let's let's go into the topic uh, about a lot of people may, may have a little bit of problems. How would you, uh, let's say, advise, uh, advise the adult chess improvers how to connect middle game with the end game? Because end game is a pretty much neglected part of the of the game. And it is something like for decades, it's not something like a modern discovery. And how would you connect this stuff about the middle game and the end game? For example, what are your methods about studying the end game? How many end games you have studied so far? What do you approach the end game from transitioning from the middle game to the end game? And all about this, let's say transition especially with the focus of the end game maybe some simple tricks about the end game we would be uh, thrilled to listen about it yeah so uh, well uh, actually in my in my experience i i didn't even encounter so many end games so i i guess that uh, you know up to a certain level uh, many games are decided in the in the middle games so um, of course i I I did learn, for example, you know, look look and games. This Lucina position, Frieder position, and and so forth. And I did have uh, Lucina, I think, once over the board in the in the Blitz tournament. But still, um, uh, I, I I couldn't remember how to play it so 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 quickly. So you, I'm 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 really not not sure about uh, uh, about technical end games because all technical end games I have studied, uh, I I never had a chance to. I still didn't have a chance to to you know to try them so mm -hmm. uh, the, the mo uh, I, I think the the more important thing is the end, end game uh, end game strategy mm -hmm. you, you know uh, to to keep in mind that uh, you know some general principles like for example uh, Jesse cry he has some good end game courses and he he says that uh, you know the end game is similar to opening in in the sense that you should develop your pieces and activate your pieces. So mm -hmm. they always tell you in the opening, activate your pieces, develop your pieces, put the pieces on the most likely squares. So he says, yeah, the same goes in the end game. So you should uh, always keep your pieces active. So, uh, so some, some of this uh, of, of stuff is, is very important. And um, for example, I, I lost many games in, um, in tournaments, uh, uh, rook and games, just because I didn't realize on time that my rooks would be passive and, and uh, opponent's rook be active so just this i mean it's not technical end game but it's just uh, you know when the rook is attacking something it's active when the rook is defending something it's passive so just mm -hmm. just this simple stuff and then i, I when i when i analyze my games whenever i get to the uh, uh rook end game against the stronger opponent somehow his rook or rooks became active and and i i was and my is passive i was treating <laughs> passivity and i it's it's difficult even to find the moment you know i 
You sit over the board and I watch the game and suddenly it occurs to me, wait a minute, both of my rooks are passive. They're just defending this one pawn. Yeah. And these rooks are all <laughs> over the place. So how, how did it ha happen? So I, I, you know, just, just, just these kind of, you know, simple things which, uh, you know, you, you, you need to think um, ahead. You, you know, in advance. Mm -hmm. In advance, you know, in this, like you said, this transition between middle game and, and then game. Yeah. So and of course, okay, some technical stuff you need you need to know you know what's wrong color bishop uh, when when you want to you know draw or promote or you know which which pawn uh, pawn structures. I, I I did make some some you know silly uh, silly mistakes from which I learned. For example, there was one pawn position in which I was a pawn down, and uh, there were only queens on the board, queens and pawns, and uh, there were like uh, I had like six pawns. I, I had five pawns. He had six, something like this, or maybe even six seven. Mm -hmm. each, I I exchange queens and it you know, oh. I'm, I'm automatically losing you know mm -hmm. yeah and and you know so the, you know the mistakes I did in the end game are, are these kind of mistakes which are you know uh, I, I I know for example I, I know from theory that you should not exchange queens if you are a pawn down uh, but yeah I, I I did it for some reason but I will sure not do this again after this pain painful you know uh, defeat now now I know. So, mm -hmm. the, so this is my my experience to the end game. It all all comes down to the, you know uh, strategy, peace, uh, peace activity. You know, don't 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 let your pieces be uh, passive and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can confirm that. Uh, even if I uh, let's say try to uh, try to transition from the middle game into end game, and in my uh, case it is pre pretty much uh, different because I love rook end games, but I need to okay. confess that I uh, invested in rook end games uh, a bit more than 300 hours exclusively okay. rook end games, and that's why because rook end games are one of the most common. That's yeah. why I knew that uh, if they pop up, I will have uh, bigger chances not to lose or win the so-called uh, drawish position, and that's why I invested. But in the meantime, I love rook end games, even if they are not that much popular, because maybe it's the one one of the factors. And now let's talk about uh, uh, just, just 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 yeah? to say, when you said it, uh, I I have one uh, one player from the club, he's mm -hmm. a master, and I asked him how how did you become candidate master, and he told me only uh, you know rook end games. So he 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 plays very very slow chess. He plays just London system, but but not attacking London system. Yeah, yeah. London system when you just you know, very solid players. one. And yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, just play positionally. So he plays, he plays French, and, and so so he just plays solid, solid chess, and uh, he aims for the rook and games, and mm -hmm. uh, invested many hours in studying rook and games, and uh, you know he he, he told me that uh, you know um, rook and game is the whole other game. So yeah, your mental mental approach should be you know when you get to the rook and game, mm -hmm. just forget that you were playing chess. You know, like yeah, okay, we play chess so far. Now mm -hmm. the chess is over. Now the new game begins. Yeah, you know, rook and game, which. Uh, uh, which will most likely, you know, if you count the moves, which will last longer than the game be between before mm -hmm. the rook end game, and uh, you know, this uh, he has this mentality when he gets into rook end game, uh, it's just you know he, he forgets that he played chess before, and now it's it's the whole different game. And yeah, this is how he became candidate master by by this you know investment. So yeah, rook end game. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for for sharing this because it's very very important, and I I can confess again because I'm I am talking this many many times, but probably it may be uh, let's say finally understood that rook and games are tricky because something like a small difference of visual aspect may make pretty much different outcome, and therefore it's it's sometimes very difficult because one uh, one uh, let's say square away rook is up or down, and then all of the let's say sudden the the outcome is the uh, opposite than the normal one. There Therefore, at root end games, what counts the most is the, uh, the, let's say, ideas and trying to remember key positions, and after that, trying to get into these positions, even if, of course, the level of difficulty may be pretty, pretty high. And now I would like to ask you about another stuff that we are talking about a little bit recently, and uh, the phenomena that probably would be great to show, uh, great to share, sorry, because uh, all of the players are pretty young one, and they may not have the access to this. What do you think about the uh, phenomena of Polgar sisters? Because, of course, Lasso Polgar was the father of this prodigy, but if you get, give so sort of like the overview about this and what is uh, from your scientific standpoint what do you think how uh, how they did it and why they did it get uh, that far i would be thrilled to listen about polgar systems phenomena yeah yeah so it's it's very interesting uh, story uh, so um this last polgar guy he's a psychologist i think and uh, his phd and his scientific research was uh, um, you know he was interested in the question can you create a genius so if you yeah. 
uh, he, he was, you know, preparing. Uh, uh, he was his PD, right? On, yeah, and uh, mm-hmm. he, he was focused on, you know, m- m- mathematics and can you can you make, uh, you know, mathematical prodigy and so forth. So um, and then and and his wife was also, I think, uh, uh, in, in, into this kind of you know scientific research, and so they 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 they, they were really fascinated with uh, with this idea. And um, yeah, he, he had this approach, and uh, he uh, he encouraged his uh, his daughters to, to to try and to you know um, to, to to excel in chess. And uh, I mean, for as as far as, as the chess chess goes, uh, his his method was uh, I, I think he he was just ex- exposing them to many many positions. So yeah, famous uh, due to know, these books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean these books are the result of his uh, collection. So he yeah. He had, um, I don't know, hundreds or, or thousands or yeah. you know, articles, and, magazines, uh, articles, yeah. magazines, he was cutting them, uh, pasting yeah. them. So, and, and then his daughters u- use this for, for training. And also, I think it's very interesting and uh, very important that uh, um, his daughters, um, especially uh, Judith, she didn't want to play in the female uh, competition, but she wanted to play in the open competition. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, she was uh, constantly um, playing with... Um, with having the, the contact with the strongest players, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, with the strongest mm-hmm. players. So yeah. uh, she, she was trained by by you know playing with uh, with the stronger stronger players. Mm-hmm. And, uh, if you if you look at the style of play, or for example of, of Judith Polgar, and uh, you know she played uh, most of her career uh, King's Gambit uh, with uh, you know Bishop uh, this uh, variation with uh, with the Bishop. Mm-hmm. So you know very very aggressive openings, and uh, you know she was just a tactical genius and the tactical genius. So it's uh, it's very interesting, you know, uh, approach to chess. So I'm not sure um, how 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 did they you know train? I, I I just I suppose there are so many positions, and it's interesting, you know, Polgar, Laszlo Polgar, and um, also uh, Polgar sisters. They they wrote several books, but uh, Polgar never wrote a book about chess opening. So yeah, it, it, it's all about you know uh, chess vision, co- co- combination uh, tactics. Uh, yeah. So, so the closest he, he he comes to the opening is this uh, 600 miniature games in which mm-hmm. he basically teaches you how not to play the opening. You know. Yeah. Or, or, Some or, like uh, opening blunders and how to yeah. avoid it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it's like uh, what will happen if you play opening battle? Yeah. If, if you go through all these 600 uh, you know uh, games, uh, mm-hmm. you will you will just learn how to you know not 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 lose. What to the, avoid, right? Yeah. What to avoid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So th- this is the closest I I, I know that he, he came from uh, from the opening. So it's yeah, it's it, it's very interesting story. It's fascinating. Mm-hmm. And what do you think? Because I will be continuing a little bit. What do you think was the key factor, or maybe what were the key factors that they excel that high? For example, that they didn't uh, let's say stuck at the level of let's say woman international master or maybe FIDE master. What happened, or what were what were the elements that boosted they up to the let's say level four champion? Because one of her, if I'm not mistaken, uh, became world champion, right? Yeah. So I, mm-hmm. I I I think the the main reason is they started very early and they started mm-hmm. with uh, with the right method very early. So yeah. I think, I think that that gave them the the advantage. You know, they had this. Uh, you know, father who was encouraging them, mother who was encouraging the three sisters between them. They uh, there is probably you know some competition in the in the home, and you know they started very early, and they yeah. started with the you know ser- serious serious method. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm not sure how many how many kids that has this opportunity. Um, for example, just just when when you mentioned, I'm I'm also working with uh, with kids in my in uh, uh, in the school. So I, I have three daughters, mm-hmm. uh, and. Um, they, they, they are go... you going? Are you going to get into the Polgar sisters? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't have this kind of ambitions, but uh, yeah, okay. They, they, they... Sorry. Okay, okay. <laughs> Just a moment. No, no, no problem, no problem. Because Polgar sisters are the phenomena, and probably uh, too yeah. many people sometimes think that I have my three kids. I mean, the daughters. Yeah. I'll do the same. No, please don't do it. It yeah, is yeah, like yeah. exception for the exceptions. Yeah, Let's continue. Yeah, yeah. So I, huh? I, I, I'm not. I, I don't have these kind of ambitions. But yeah, my, my kids, my kids play chess, and um, I, I lead a small um, group in in the school. So I have once a week. Uh, um, we have like a small chess club, which are kids like uh, nine, ten, eleven years old. And uh, I, I just, you know, teach them chess. They play. I, I give, give them some lectures and and so forth. So, um, for example, my, my my experience with kids, I I don't, uh, um, you know, I, I can imagine that Polgar had, you know, uh, all worked out in in, in advance 
regards method methodology and so forth. And uh, I think most most of the of the kids which um, you know um, learn chess in school and uh, it's more like you know presented as a, as a fun way. Mm -hmm. fun healthy way to to spend your time to maybe you know not to get bored no not to get bored and it's a uh, it, it's useful you know uh, in mm -hmm. the academic sense so you, you are um, uh, developing your logical thinking and so on so yeah i i don't think many many kids had what uh, what polgar sisters had mm -hmm. yeah definitely and of course this is a super exception because if we just take into the history nobody has ever done it right because it was the one experiment over all of the population and over all of the chess history therefore of course there are the indians prodigy that are going very very far but they are having the let's say because i, I had the conversation with jacob ogart and he mm -hmm. just mentioned that the let's say indian stars indians prodigy they are that they get that far due to intense practice and the practice is something like two sorry 10 to 12 day 12 hours a day and day by day yes this is super intense yeah. then they start early and they do not have the education in a, a traditional sense they are homeschooled and therefore these three these three yeah. uh, let's say yeah. elements can produce such results right yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's the same thing for example in in physics and in mathematics you know yeah the, please continue uh, Ch chinese tend to you know chinese kids tend to to dominate because it, it's uh yeah I mean, it's the same approach. So they start very early. For mm -hmm. example, if they see that somebody has a talent for physics, uh, you know, that kid would start doing physics, at, you know, when, when he's five years old and he'll just do physics and all other aspects of education, mm -hmm. be, you know, neglected and he'll just have, you know, all, all, all the time just to do physics and, and so on. And, and then when he comes to the, you know, some, some competition, you know, you, he, he, he just dominates. And it's, it's uh, yeah, in, in Europe and, you know, I, I would say in most of the Western culture, it's uh, we have a different approach of education. So, yeah, we, we have a broader education, and uh, you know we, we learn many things about many things. So this specialization is not so present in Western culture, culture, mm -hmm. and especially we don't start so early. So when you are five, yeah. you are in the kindergarten, you you know you, you play with marbles. You, you don't even you know to think about doing something seriously. So mm -hmm. this is the difference. But um, yeah, I mean. Um, but the, the the other question it's more it's more about you know learning is uh, when you have a kid who starts so early and so 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 specialized it is um, it's not clear when when he when he is grown up will he have uh, enough you know creativity to create mm -hmm. something because maybe his education is is too narrow but we we will see we'll see now how yeah. how, how the comparison between these different uh, learning cultures will will, uh, will result. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And another question that is uh, related to the prodigy to develop and progress is the stuff that uh, you just uh, moved m many times, but I would like you to make a little bit of summary if this possible. What, the, what are the biggest difference between the young learners and older learners, especially at chess? And which one can be improved with the training and which one shouldn't be even touched upon? Some like a talent, because in a moment I would like to uh, talk about the talent as well. Please elaborate. Well, like I said, I think the, the biggest uh, the biggest difference is that uh, kids just uh, learn very very quickly. So when they um, the, uh, this is the uh, this long term and short term memory. So when when the kid sees an interesting chess position, it immediately goes to his long term memory because you know the key synapses it is forming and everything. And in order for an adult to put something in the long term memory, it's very difficult. Um, you have to do this ten times over and and so forth. And there is also I I can't remember who who, who was the, talking about this one of the chess authors, who said mm -hmm. that um, the problem with adults is that we have too many baggage. You know, we, we mm -hmm. have too many opinions. We have too many um, you know stuff for we, we we are attached to certain patterns of thinking. And then when you, when you learn something new, you try to adopt it in your existing existing mm -hmm. patterns of, yeah. of, of thinking. And then uh, this is why it's. Uh, difficult for adult to learn something and the kid is no he's tabula rasa he's just you know empty board and when he sees something he just uh, adopts it he, he doesn't have this you know baggage of opinions which which will stop him to to, to learn something mm -hmm. and, well basically the the kids are in better you know physical shape they you know they, they can just uh, do, do things very um very very fast 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And if we just elaborate a little bit, because probably you may have heard about it, Dr. Huberman, Andrew Huberman, he was yes. talking about the plasticity of the mind, that uh, the plasticity of the of the mind that allows uh, the uh, people up to the up to the age of 25 to make it some like a very very intense, uh, let's say, absorption of material. And after this magical 25, maybe it was 27, but but below 30, let's say magical uh, border. If you cross this border, the absorption of the material material or maybe retention of uh, material would be some like dropping uh, uh, very much, uh, let's say quickly. And in the meantime, that you just mentioned that many times, I fully agree, adults, so like the adults at the age of 40, right? And the teenagers at the age of 10 or 15, the biggest difference is the necessity to, uh, let's say, uh, repeat the material all over yeah. again, right? Yeah. Because for yeah. example, if adults would do the same five times faster as normally we do, probably there would be not that huge difference about yeah. adults and teenagers. What about that? Yeah, yeah, prob probably. I, I I heard about this, but uh, you know, uh, this what what you just said. This this is all I know about this. Uh, exactly, exactly this. So yeah, um, I, I I also think this uh, because uh, you know, if I need to do something ten ten times in order to, uh, in order to remember, and he needs to do this only once. Mm -hmm. this, this is I, I think uh, if. He, he, on, only this could could explain uh, you know the the whole problem because he can learn you know thousand positions and in the same time I can learn only hundred positions and mm -hmm. of course he will he will uh, you know learn much much more positions and uh, you know but but also also other stuff regarding you know um, uh, understanding of the position or, or stuff which are not maybe just patterns or tactics and uh, this is the, uh, this thing with you know uh, baggage of opinions comes to mind. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are attached so for example you 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 have one way of thinking uh, about the position of assessing the position and so in order to um to improve uh, this you need to somehow unlearn what you yeah. learned unlearning and then, yeah. and then learn something something new and mm -hmm. this, is very, this is very difficult so instead of unlearning uh, your brain always try to you know keep what it, what it learned and, mm -hmm. somehow, and try you know, to attach it. To, uh, attach new information. Uh -huh. And this is the, the difficult process. And the kid doesn't have to unlearn anything. He just learns stuff and, and this is it. So, yeah. Uh, and probably, as you just mentioned, probably this is the <laughs> offer. Probably at, at seven deadly lessons, maybe you just read about it. Mm -hmm. Because he's talking about the unlearning and the yeah. stuff that you mentioned. That sometimes if you think that you need to, let's say, pack more information, Sometimes it's less. You need to unpack some of the mission and clean the system, if I can say that. Therefore, it may be it may be very very important as well. And there, there is very interesting. I think I think it was in this just for zebras because I, I was reading this book uh, uh -huh. before because it is unlearning very 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 well. Let's say expressed. I, I, think, I think in the, in the introduction of this book, uh, he's talking about the frustration of the coaches who work with adult yeah. groomers, and then the, this is very interesting phenomenon which he says. You know, you 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 analyze the games from the you know. Um, from your student and you tell tell him you are doing this and this wrong you should do this yeah. this, and this and then he he, he really did this uh, you know next few games he plays great again and then some games later he he, he again comes back so this is this you know mm -hmm. he play always comes back to what what he what he uh, you know he, he learned previously so uh, yeah, yeah it's um it, it's a mystery of the brain yeah yeah, and, and it's fascinating because th therefore I, I warn all of my viewers, because part of my viewers are pretty much, let's say, adult ones, that I warn them that they never compare themselves to the chess prodigies or the players yeah. who are already title players. For example, if they ask me, what can I achieve if I devote one hour a day and I am 30 years old? I just I just uh, make the simple reply. Do not expect anything besides enjoyment of chess and try step by step, uh, let's say, in, uh, integrate various elements, especially the ones you really like. If you have stronger players or the coach, mm -hmm. ask him what you can do with this super limited time, uh, let's say, that you want to devote into chess. Because if we just compare, let's say, this adult chess player who can devote just one hour a day with chess prodigies that work 10 hours a day and have, the, let's say, five up to 10 times faster absorption and retention, probably the difference is probably huge, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good advice. Okay, and now let's go a little bit about the, uh, let's say, books, because you are a very, very, let's say, uh, prolific reader, and I would like to ask you about the books that you think that are very important for the development of the player. Of course, you can just give some, let's say, titles, but you can even just give the, let's say, short description, what the book needs to consist, uh, contain, sorry, to be some, like, help for the adult chess improvers. 
Okay, so unfortunately I'm not at home, so I don't have my. Yeah, of course, of course. So otherwise, I would, I would be. Um, so I, I, I think. Well, first of all, uh, there are obviously opening books, which um, I, I don't think are are uh, very useful for an adult improver. I think uh, the, the any any good un, uh, collection of annotating annotating uh, annotated games will be. Um, will be better than, than learning just uh, opening and opening variations. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say this first class of books is annotated games. And uh, I think they, they are uh, maybe maybe most useful kind of books. And uh, I, I made some videos about how to go through annotated games because mm -hmm. um, the, the players, the, the amateurs who, who take the, the book, you know, like I, I have, for example, this one by, by Morphe. It's just creation book, small book. I, I carry it myself because I, I love Morphe games. So mm -hmm. um, they, they, they go through games and uh, through, through annotations and they, they see, you know, um, many, many variations, some variations and so forth, and they get discouraged. So I think yeah. the important uh, thing to know about when you, when you take a book with annotated games is that uh, the annotations are made, made for um, probably masters, maybe even grandmasters. So the annotations are made for, for everybody. And you mm -hmm. need to see which, which annotations are for you and which are not for you. And um, my, my recommendation is that uh, when you go through the game with your, with your board and pieces, don't, uh, don't move the pieces. So move only, only the pieces which are made in the game. So mm -hmm. when you have the position and uh, you read the comments and annotations and variations, as long as you can uh, follow the annotations without moving the pieces, this is for you. And mm -hmm. when you come to the level, okay, I don't, I don't see this variation, you know, I, mm -hmm. I have to move the piece, pieces in order to see the variation. That means that this variation is not for you. This yeah. is, you know, international masters, it's not for you. And, and this, this is how you can, uh, I think, take the maximum uh, of, of annotating, uh, annotated games. So just try to put yourself in the shoes of the player, try to guess the move, and then try to read the annotation and try to understand the position. So th this, these kind of books, I think, are, are most useful. And uh, of course, th then there are books like uh, we just talked about Ronson uh, and so on, which are you know uh, uh, more about chess psychology, about uh, you know reading the the path and uh, the ex of uh, experienced player and uh, the thoughts of experienced player who is thinking about chess. I think these are great books, and um, the advantage of these books is that you can read them, you know, in the bed, in the beach, uh, in, in your chair. They usually don't require you know chess set and uh, and everything. So these are these are nice books. So then there are, there are many books who deal with, um, you know, general chess strategy, um, like, uh, for example, this uh, Soviet chess primer or, or what yeah. it's called. Yes, by it's Mizelis, a, probably. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. Mizelis, yeah. It, it, it's, it's a great book. So it's, you know, it just covers, you know, a uh, number of general chess, chess topics. Um, then books like um, uh, who deal with strategy. You know, uh, for my favorite book is Simple Chess, this, you know, small. Michael small Stein? Book. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, small but far powerful book, you yeah. know. But, but it's, uh, these books are, are also just, you know, good annotations from good games, you know. So the, uh, I, I like these kind of books and, um, you know, strategy books in general. So like uh, Serevan or uh, Helston, for example, this Helston has this, you know, opening strategy. Uh, mm -hmm. Three volumes. Strategy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think these, these are great books. I mean, the, he, he, he's just giving you the, the game um, and, and he's, he's commenting and he's giving you some lessons. So the, the, these, these are, the, are the books I, I like. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, if we will be, let's say, wrapping up in a, let's say, few few minutes, because we just explored yeah, all of yeah. the stuff that we wanted to do. So I'm super grateful for that. What are the biggest, uh, let's say, mistakes and the pieces of advice you would like to get to all chess improvers based on our experience and the knowledge you have possessed so far? The biggest something like tips to do and mistakes to avoid. OK, so I, I think uh... I think it's it's good uh, good thing to avoid uh, playing too much blitz online online blitz. I um, uh, especially bullet. Mm -hmm. So I, I think um, uh, like we said, you, uh, in order to improve as adult, you have to unlearn some stuff. Mm -hmm. and yeah. If you play blitz, you are just you know <laughs> you, you are just enforcing uh, the, the bad the bad habits, and it's very difficult to unlearn something when you when you just apply this. In the in, in the in the blitz, um, I mean this goes for for online blitz and also uh, and also bullet of course. But for mm -hmm. example, every, every kind of uh, over the board game is uh, is greatly encouraged, even yeah. if it's blitz, even if it's three plus two, because 
you know, you are, when you're playing over the board, first of all, it's, you know, social experience, it's holistic experience, and uh, you, you tend to take things much more seriously, you know. Mm -hmm. but when, when you play online, you're playing against somebody you, you don't even know, and you know, okay, if you lose a blunder, you'll just design and click. I'll next click game. next game. Yeah, and, and you get the next game. But when you come to uh -huh. the club or when you come to the tournament, to Blitz tournament, mm -hmm. <coughs> you know, you'll play like maybe seven, eight, nine, ten games. Mm -hmm. And you tend to take them very seriously, and you're also yeah. motivated. You know, you see the person, somebody's watching by. You know, usually you know these people, uh, and, you're, and you're, if you will be playing bad, others would be laughing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so all, all this. So I, I think the, you know, going. I, I, I know that not everybody has this, this, uh, you know, possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, they're not so much. You know, chess clubs all over the world. But you know, just going to the to the club or to the tournament and playing over the board is. I, I think it's it's. It's something which uh, also adult improvers uh, lack. So they, they lack this real tournament uh, mm -hmm. tournament experience and over the board experience. So um, I, I was just reminded about uh, Ben Feingold's story. You know, when, when he said that uh, he became a life master in one year. So mm -hmm. he, played, he played 300 games um, over yeah. 280 in, in one year. So he, he was mm -hmm. just playing a lot. And super and, intense. Yeah, super intense. So. And, and we, we just don't, don't play don't play uh, don't play as much and uh, if you are over the board player you know um, like I said first of all the difference between 2d and 3d board is is a huge issue so if you want to be over the board player playing online is is not so not so useful mm -hmm. you, you you should of course it's fun it's relaxing and you should play uh, online as a part of your training but uh, you know not not so not so intensely. And um, yeah, and, and also, you know, I, I said it many times, uh, which I, I would advise to avoid is, you know, to be so focused on the opening, uh, you know, mm -hmm. because opening gives you false uh, sense of control, you know, it's, yeah. you know, everything is nice, you know, you have a book, you have explanation, uh, you, you have the sense that you, you, you are controlling something, but uh, actually, I, I often compare it with, with tennis, you know, you have, mm -hmm. you, you have a new racket, but you are your complete beginner. And then you buy a new racket, which which costs, I don't know, and, and then you think your tennis will improve. It, it, it will not. I mean, it, it will be all, almost almost the same. So, um, yeah, it, it's maybe it's maybe it's better to to spend your time on, on some other some other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. And the last question before I'll just give you the free spot that, that we, you can just uh, tell whatever you wish that I forget to ask the question about the coach. To study chess with the coach or without the coach, what are the pros and cons, and what is your approach about it? Yeah. So um, first of all, I'm I'm doing coaching myself. I, I have I have several students. So uh, when when I started, uh, I, it was my intense by intent. But um, when I started the YouTube channel, some of my viewers uh, asked me to coach them. So yeah, I said yes, and then now I have several students, and I also work with kids. So I have this um, coaching experience and. Uh, I, th I think it's a, it, it's a it's a generally good thing to have somebody stronger who can advise you, who can uh, tell you when, when uh, where you are wrong, uh, and somebody you can ask, you know, what did I do wrong here, or what am I doing wrong? Uh, do I play, you know, um, maybe maybe I, I play wrong openings for my style. So somebody who is uh, uh, who is fo who is um, following you, who is watching your games. Who is familiar with your style and everything can give you some uh, some advice insight about your uh, game, right? Insights, yeah, which, which are very difficult to find on your own. So mm -hmm. personally, I I don't have a coach, but I I do have a I do have a club, and uh, I do have some stronger players, especially this this one one player from the club who is uh, uh, very very helpful and. Um, we, we we talk about chess all the time. It's some like consultation with him, right? Consultation yeah, yeah, service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he he's not the coach. I, I don't pay him. Yeah, yeah, he, got it. We, we talk about chess a lot, and uh, I, I also give him. Uh, he's much stronger than me, but uh, I, I I can also give him some of my insights. You know, regarding mm -hmm. openings, regarding uh, chess psychology, which he finds helpful. So so we we kind of help each other. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, but um, uh, the, the, this experience is very important. You know. I play a game and then I, I, I watch the game and I'm not sure where, where, where the things went wrong. And mm -hmm. then I sent him the game and I just said, tell him, you know, can you just tell me which which is which move which stupid move did I make which I don't see? Mm -hmm. He uh, most time it was just you know in, in in the in the message we don't even and, yeah. and, and he just tell me okay this move this is complete this move shows completely you know lack of understanding of the position 
and 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 he 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 finds the move in which the the um, the game the went positions wrong. start to collapse right yeah. and which, mm -hmm. which, which, which I didn't uh, detect because you know mm -hmm. the engine shows you all, all uh, wrong moves when when it's too late yeah so, so these kind of things and also um, since he was you know watching my some of my games and so forth so he he could advise me which kind of games you know uh, which kind of openings and which kind of games should I aim for so, mm -hmm. so for example he told me you know you 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 like play, you obviously like playing with your pieces you like to to fight for the center so. You, you should look no, no further than, you know, just most classical openings, you know, just play or, or you know, Petrov, just play Petrov, you just, you know, exchange e pawns and everything will be in the center. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 these are the positions in which you feel most comfortable. So, yeah, something he can see from the side, which uh, which I couldn't be able to see. Uh, to see. So I, I think it's it's a, it's a good a good thing to have somebody stronger. If you don't have a guy in the club and if you can afford the coach, then uh, this could be a coach will just you know follow your games and uh, also the coach can give you some some kind of discipline because he's holding you accountable so for example yeah. I, I i mean i, I don't usually uh, you know give uh, homework to my students but every mm -hmm. time we had the session I, I told him okay it would be great if you could play you know one or two long games you know before our our next sessions and then you know he, he knows that uh, first of all he has to play a longer game because i i mm -hmm. And uh, he knows that we'll be, we'll be analyzing this game. So when he's playing this game, he's motivated because he has in his head that, okay, this game, you know, we, we will uh, next week will be analyzed and so forth. So uh, you're just accountable to, to somebody and responsible uh, for your actions because yeah. your coach doesn't yeah. want to waste the time and energy, right? Yeah, and also mm -hmm. you know, coach can just spare you uh, lots of time. So mm -hmm. if you if you don't know how to play against French. It's much, uh, you know, uh, it's much quicker if you just ask your coach, uh, how should I play French? And he mm -hmm. shows you and he learns you in 15 minutes basic ideas. And uh, it's much quicker than if, if you need to, you know, to take a book and try to find find out on, on your own. Yeah, thank you very much. And now I'll just have a look about the chat because before I just give you this spot, I'll, I'll try to address some of the, let's say, questions. One of the questions from our friend Lifetime is what is the highest ceiling of 30 plus year person learning chess he personally experienced? He's asking about ceiling of 30 plus person. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. So the, the person who, who started to play is 30 plus or... Uh... Yes, the person who started playing at uh, the age 30 plus and what was the ceiling? Some like the, the level that he could not, could not break, but you know about this case. Yeah, I just have to think. No, no, no problem. You can I know, take I know, your time. I know, I, I, I know some, some good success stories. So I mm -hmm. know, for example, a guy from club who started, I think he was 39 when, when he started to play chess. <clears throat> he used to he used to play uh, basketball and, and, and some other sports, and then he got injured. Then he get to the chess. Mm -hmm. He became to uh, he, he reached this two thousand elo fide. Uh, wow! And do you know what was the uh, time that he started and reached this two thousand elo? What was the period? Uh, several years, I think. Wow! Really impressive because take notice that being an adult and it's not not yeah. that easy. Mm -hmm. but he, he he had he had for example. Um, Okay, he's obviously a very intelligent person, but but he he had this uh, opportunity to play many many uh, over the board players? blitz games and uh, mm -hmm. in, in the club. So oh. you, you know he he would go to the club and they would play like all night. You know they just mm -hmm. on a, like very five, intense, five, very five, intense five, experience five. related to games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then some stronger players advised him. And uh, for example, his his part of this particular guy have in mind he 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 didn't play so much you know online and not reading the books. But he, he was just you know in the club all the time playing mm -hmm. uh, uh, with online play so he, he managed I, I know some some younger I know um, for example the, 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 this guy who, who consults me he mm -hmm. started when he was 22 and he became national candidate master mm -hmm. he's, wow. he's like I think his peak rating was uh, in FIDE uh, 2100 national it's uh, uh, 2050 FIDE or something like this so so mm -hmm. I I know some some success stories, but uh, yeah, they, they, they usually aim for this. Um, here we have a national rating system, so they aim for to become this uh, national candidate master. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. this, this is usually, from my experience, uh, some some uh, you know level which uh, adult improvers uh, can achieve if they are very good and uh, you know very dedicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, now the spot that I promised you, if I didn't address some of the questions, some of the topics that you would like to address, please, now it's your time. 
Well, to be honest, I think we uh, we, we addressed everything. I I, have nothing, <laughs> I, I, I I don't have anything in my mind. I mean, it, it's a nice update. I would like to advise, uh, you know, your, your listeners and uh, the people who will be watching this on YouTube to watch the uh, our first conversation. Yeah. Uh, we covered the many, many topics there. And uh, this is like, a, you know, short update. So maybe maybe just to summarize. So the update is that I realized that, that uh, psychological aspect of chess is, is very important and plays important role. I mean, I'm now currently in the stage in which it, it plays important role. And mm -hmm. uh, I managed to came up with a really, really good algorithm. So yeah. um, maybe maybe if you, you 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 can share the link you know of my yeah I'm sharing just now mm -hmm. I'm sharing just now YouTube video yeah with, uh, yeah. with the algorithm so uh, I I think th these these two um, these two things are some are uh, something which uh, happened uh, between our last conversation and now mm -hmm. and of course uh, these two things happened because I played many over the board tournaments and I I plan to play you know uh, more few more tournaments and I also play the league so we have this Croatian National League which mm -hmm. is on six boards so I'm I'm uh, in my club I play on the fifth board so um, th this also gives me opportunity you know to to experience uh, over the board games mm -hmm. and, um, as a result of this experience this algorithm and this uh, you know realization of the importance of psychological aspect uh, came by Mm -hmm. And now the question that probably you may not uh, be uh, ready, but anyway, it, it should be a little bit uh, surprising. Are you planning or are you thinking about writing a book based on your journey, based on your methods, the technique and so on? I do not mean I, I became grandmaster, but rather yeah. I was an adult third chess improver and I, be I became, let's say, national master, right? So like not super, let's say, clickable. Some like, uh, let's say, yeah. stuff that is in most often on YouTube, but rather something like the critical assessment of my approach, some like what I discovered during the, let's say, next phases of my improvement and how my rating grow up until, let's say, national master or cardinal master. What about that? Yeah. Have you thought about it? Is it yeah. in your plan? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I did. And um, well, it, it will all depend on my uh, success or, or lack of success. So if I if I succeed to, you know, to to go um, to achieve some level which I will personally um, regard as a, as a success. So mm -hmm. if, if I, you know, if, if there is a sex, sex, success story, mm -hmm. then I will, I will be um, maybe inclined to, to write a book about this. But uh, first, you know, first I have to achieve the success and then, mm -hmm. then yeah. I will write a book about it. <laughs> so got it, got it. Time. Yes, we are keeping yeah. fingers crossed on you because you are one of the most, uh, let's say, passionate players I have ever met. And especially what I am super happy and super proud of, that you are from the scientific background. And yeah. that's why I'm that much impressed, because I know that everything that you, let's say, read, study and analyze is something like filter out but the scientific mind. And believe me, it's different quality. I do not, let's say, want to flex or, or boost on anyone else, but some, sometimes the players who are dedicated to science, I can spot them for kilometers. So yeah, like they, yeah. they behave different way, right? Even if they, then, if, they, if, they, if, they, if, they, if they do not reveal their identity, I was a major in physics. I was the major in mathematics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. a major in astronautics. I know because they, they have something like a structured, structured mm -hmm. methods structured ways of thinking and their expressions are different than the, than the average one. Therefore, I'm very grateful that you're doing this. And in the meantime, I'm super happy that you are just sharing your views, that you are just accepting the invitations and publish your all of the discoveries over YouTube channel. I'm super, super grateful for that. I'm keeping fingers crossed on you. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, okay thank you very much. Take care and have okay. a next, next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.